I was speaking to a Protestant recently who told me that a priest told him that there are many paths to heaven and we need not necessarily accept Jesus. I am skeptical. Is what he says accurate? Who, the priest or the Protestant? The, the, uh, right. uh, is well, it accurate that some Protestant heard a priest say that? Hard to say. <laughs> hard to say. Could be. Could yeah. be some priest said that to him. Uh, how should I understand the priest's uh, words, if that is in fact what he represented? Yeah. Yeah. So I'd say the priest is really mangling the doctrine of the church, uh, but I understand the spirit in which he's attempting to represent it. What the church teaches is that, the, look, anyone who gets to heaven is going to get to heaven because the grace of Christ has inwardly transformed them. There's no getting to heaven any other way. So in that sense, it all comes from Jesus. The grace of Christ has inwardly transformed the person, made them like Christ. Now, the, the most manifest way, the public way established by Jesus, the quickest and easiest way to access that grace and conform our lives uh, to its meaning is through the public ministry of the Catholic Church, because this is the institution that Christ established. Jesus said, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So if you want to know what the image of Christ looks like, come to the teaching of the Catholic Church. If you want to know how to live in accord with the imitation of Christ, come to the teaching of the Catholic Church. If you want uh, a guaranteed access to the grace of Christ, come to the sacraments of the Catholic Church. So that's the way to do it. Now, however, however, what if you have only part of the teaching of the Catholic Church? and some of the sacramental system of the Catholic Church. Uh -huh. Let's say, for example, you're in a Protestant church. So you have 66 of the 73 biblical books. Well, you got a lot of them. Yeah. You know, you got a bunch of them, but you don't have all of them. What if you have two sacraments and not seven? What if you have, say, baptism and marriage, which is what most Protestants have in the way of valid sacraments, but you lack the other sacraments? Well, are your 66 books of the Bible and two sacraments of no value? No, the Church says you've got elements of truth and sanctification. Yeah. And those elements, if you lay hold of them and cooperate with the grace found therein, can in fact sanctify and save you. But you're still being saved through the grace of Christ that's present to us in the Catholic Church. It's just sort of been broken off from, uh, from the trunk a little bit, and you've just got kind of a deficient form of it. Okay. Right, what if you're a little bit farther afield than the Protestant communion? You know, what if you are just sort of a vague theist? Um, you have an idea of the existence of God and the demands of the moral life and a desire to live a virtuous life, and you maybe don't know about the Catholic faith. Can that much truth be sanctifying and save you? Mm -hmm. Well, the Church has always held that theoretically it could. Now, it's, it's, it's proportionately more difficult because the elements of the natural law are somewhat obscure to us. And they need, we need the clarity of the Church's teaching to draw them out, make them explicit. Um, and so you might have you might be confused in your moral thinking, uh, but it is at least theoretically possible that a person could lay hold of the grace of Christ in some extraordinary manner known only to God. That's why church fathers like Justin Martyr, second century, considered Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, Democritus, the Greek philosophers, he said, are participating through their philosophy in the same divine logos who becomes incarnate in Christ. So he called them like, Christians before Christ. Uh, not that everything they said was accurate, not that they weren't problems in their formulations, mm -hmm. but the Church has always recognized that it is at least possible for someone to lay hold of the grace of Christ in some extra-sacramental, extra-ecclesial way, even if the most manifest way and the way established by Jesus is the public teaching of the Catholic Church.